Hello again, everyone. It's great seeing you again, and thanks for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, hosting the Sunday show. Up first, hazardous weather graphic, uh, snow advisory here for the Susitna Valley uh, for anywhere or through tonight until 6 a.m., just like yesterday, looking for uh, up to uh, a foot of snow in some areas here. That'd be mainly western and northern Susitna Valley and uh, otherwise around that 8 to 12 inch range there. Uh, we've about had that up there around Talkeetna uh, already in the last 24 hours. And then also for the uh, Wasilla Palmer area, winter weather advisory into the uh, Manuska Valley uh, for tonight also, but looking for the snowfall totals there to be anywhere from two to six inches in those areas. Of course, heavier up toward Independence Mine where it usually is, and they've picked up 14 inches of snow uh, since it began snowing yesterday there. Otherwise, uh, here now a winter weather advisory also out for the eastern North Gulf Coast for snow, three to six inches until 1 a.m. tomorrow morning for Yakutat, and same thing, three to six inches of snow, resulting in a snow advisory for the greater Juneau area, as well as uh, Taya Inlet, and Haines on up to Skagway, northern Lynn Canal, and those areas. Uh, again, three to six inches of snow total, and that's out until 1 a.m. tonight, or Monday morning. Looking at the satellite imagery here, we've got uh, moisture and clouds pushing eastward into the southeast coast here with uh, Rain over the uh, southern areas that tapers off and ends. No precipitation really reported today over the southern southeast coast. And then about uh, maybe a couple inches of wet snow fell at Sitka today. Temperatures in the mid 30s, 36 or so there. And some light snow over at Juneau, extending back toward Yakutat, where they picked up a couple inches of snow there, as well as some wet snow, one, two, three inches falling in the Cordova area today. Low pressure here tracking eastward. <clears throat> Southeast flow ahead of that, pulling some warmer air on those southeast winds into Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, Kenai Lake at mid-afternoon, 41 degrees, and temperatures mid to upper 30s over western Prince William Sound into Turnigan Arm, where east winds gusted to 42 miles an hour at McHugh Creek. Otherwise, snow increasing across northern Cook Inlet during the afternoon on Sunday here, continuing up to the north. Colder air back to the west here, gradually will be seeping its way eastward and southward in across uh, south central Alaska, eventually Kodiak Island there, and some more moisture here just south of the eastern Aleutians. And low pressure just west, hard to see here on the imagery of the Pribilofs today, that uh, brought a little milder air in, and uh, rain showers, St. Paul this afternoon. Cold air right back behind here, and that rain shower condition isn't gonna last long as the colder air will be poised to just move in across the area here over the next several hours. On the chart, there's that uh, low pressure area I spoke of there. Warmer actually farther north than what I have it drawn here up into the cross the Perbloff Islands on those southwest winds, but uh, much colder air coming in back behind. Snow shower Shimia eventually uh, pushing in toward Adak and Atka, and a band of snow here across uh, south central Alaska, western Alaska range, and uh, from areas from Oh, King Salmon up to northeastward there across the Iliamna Lake. Uh, anywhere from four to six inches of snow has fallen there and uh, tapers off though as you head north here into the uh, mid and upper Tanaw Valley over toward Eagle. And even less, just some flurries there along the Arctic coast with that disturbance. Uh, temperatures up there about 15 below at Atosuk this afternoon, uh, coldest there. As that contrasts with uh, 43 degrees down at, I believe it was Shelter Cove, there with a little bit of clearing over the southern southeast coast. And the forecast for tonight, front approaches the Panhandle, increasing winds, especially central south coast, uh, possibly approaching gale force. Otherwise, uh, windy, wet over the uh, 
interior, inside waters, with the snow advisory Juneau northward across the Lynn Canal, Klondike Highway, Haines to Skagway again, as well as uh, eastern north Gulf Coast uh, for Yakutat. But again, that ends at 1 a.m. for both locations. Snow gradually tapering off later tonight for Cook Inlet. Uh, none for Kodiak Island, another low though just to your south. New low here forms, or actually the old one here, kind of drops in toward the Alaska Peninsula. Push of cold air comes southward here. Could see some blowing snow developing, rapidly dropping snowfall levels with that. For tonight, clearing colder western interior, trying to push eastward. And still a threat of some flurry action up there in the central Arctic coast, but nothing really significant. Higher pressure over the central or western Aleutians kind of shifts eastward tomorrow. Not a real strong high westerly flow aloft through it, so still some uh, clouds and maybe some light snow showers, but the bulk of the snow showers will be uh, due to this northerly flow and the cold air coming out over the open water into the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. Chance of snow showers Kodiak Island uh, as the colder air begins to come in and those winds pick up out of the northwest and this area of snow beginning to diminish and weaken and push slowly off to the east and looks like uh, windy and wet, milder over the southern southeast coast and chance of snow continues over the northern areas. And the outlook for Tuesday, low pressure pulls into Canada, but still west-southwest flow keeps it unsettled, uh, a lot of moisture in the form of snow, uh, really depending on your time of day, latitude and elevation there for the panhandle. Uh, definitely uh, snow if there's any moisture left for the North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island, just a risk of snow showers, but very tight gradient building here across the southeastern part of the interior for pretty strong northerly winds and a cold outbreak once again. Very cold temperatures, especially overnight hours here in the west all the way up to the Arctic coast. Lows well, for tonight, uh, 25 to 30 for the Panhandle, back down into the uh, upper teens, mid to upper teens, south central Alaska near 30 Kodiak. Below zero, uh, Tana Valley and uh, lower Yukon River Valley areas, 220 to 35 below on the north slope to the Arctic coast. Highs tomorrow staying below zero here. Uh, northern interior <clears throat> to the Arctic coast and 20s to lower 30s, southern Alaska, with temperatures back up near 40 over uh, portions of the Panhandle, mainly south and Sitka, Port Alexander areas, near 40 central Aleutians, 30s everywhere else, followed by lows uh, down into the mid-teens here, south central Alaska, below zero for the Yukon Delta, near zero in the Kuskokwim Delta, and lower 30s in the Panhandle, near zero in the Tanana Valley, followed by highs 15 to 20 in that area and below zero to the north and northwest, mid 20s, southern Alaska with uh, mid tw upper 20s to lower 30s there for the north Gulf Coast and uh, mid 30s Kodiak Island. So windy and colder temperatures, just barely getting above freezing there and still uh, upper 30s to lower 40s for the southeast coast. Some areas could push up around 45 degrees, mid 30s. Central Eastern Aleutians, as well as Shimia, but only 17, your forecast high for St. Paul. And uh, near zero there for the Yukon Delta for the highs, a little above zero St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, the Seward Peninsula, mostly below zero, but Nome should push up to three degrees. And the Arctic Coast North Slope, looking at that 10 to 20 below range for your daytime highs in the afternoon. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Look at the first line weather graphic here for Monday morning. Big batch of IFR here, southern southeastern Bering Sea, on up into uh, southern Bristol Bay there along the Alaska Peninsula. Eastern Lucians all the way out to Atka, then uh, dramatic improvement there west of Adak with a lot of VFR showing up. Marginal VFR up the southwest coast into the Bering Strait and then some VFR with some higher pressure, drier and colder air over the western interior, gradually shifting eastward. IFR here, uh, Talkeetna Mountains, Alaska Range, northward in across the Fairbanks area to Eagle and the, right up almost to the Yukon River. IFR here, eastern north Gulf Coast, part of the Gulf of Alaska and the Panhandle and becoming VFR for Kodiak Island. And then tomorrow afternoon, looks like some possible IFR there on the east side of the island here. And that expands as you head eastward and covers all of the southeast coast right up to about Yakutat, marginal VFR Yakutat across Prince William Sound, Madnuska Valley, uh, but uh, south central Alaska here improving throughout the day. IFR though holding most of the day from uh, Copper River Basin across the Alaska Range 
right up the uh, upper Tanaw Valley to the Brooks Range on the east side there. Pretty good BFR out here to the west, northern Bering Sea. Uh, southern Bering Sea mostly marginal, and then some VFR for Adak and Atka and the south side of the Alaska Peninsula. And for Tuesday morning, band IFR with the next uh, mediocre front coming into the western Aleutians, otherwise marginal VFR into the Bering Sea. Uh, a little more widespread VFR here for the Pribilof Islands and Alaska Peninsula. Follow, or on, on the eastern side, we've got marginal here along the coast up to St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula, and uh, sort of in the southeastern Chukchi Sea. VFR here northwest to southeast from the western central Arctic coast all the way down. Kodiak Island VFR, southern Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet VFR into the western Gulf. IFR, Copper River Basin, and then uh, again up the 40 mile country across Deagle up to the Brooks Range where it expands westward. And IFR, pretty widespread over the southeast coast. And then for the afternoon, uh, that breaks up, just some areas IFR left over with marginal conditions uh, falling in behind, up to the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast, up along the eastern part of the state here with some leftover IFR around, uh, I'll say, Mentasta Pass and eastern Alaska Range, and Bezna, maybe Northway. Big area of VFR for Tuesday afternoon here uh, for much of the interior and then just some areas of marginal VFR here along the coast, St. Lawrence Island and the northern Seward Peninsula up to uh, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon. And that front, not really much to it here as far as IFR goes, but there is a narrow band of that crossing the central Aleutians. Passes for tomorrow, or for tomorrow, Anatovic and Adigan, marginal VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal becoming VFR. Same trend for rainy, improving throughout the day, windy, IFR. Uh, hopefully becoming VFR. It may take till late in the day or early evening. And for Isabel IFR and Mentasta, the other way, some moisture shifting eastward. So you start out VFR and then become IFR in the afternoon. Tanita IFR becoming marginal or mostly marginal. And uh, just a chance of IFR for Tanita. And then Portage, marginal VFR. And Chilkoot and White IFR becoming marginal. Freezing levels, 2,000 feet right up off the south, southern southeast coast at the surface along the coastline. Farther south here in the Bering Sea tomorrow morning than it was this morning. Still north of the Aleutians but south of the Pribilofs. Icing none out west, central western interior. No icing, uh, possible light stuff here, just a threat or a pretty good chance possibly here over the eastern interior and the heavier moisture there. Uh, closer to the jet with considerable moderate under the, over the southern southeast coast. Jet stream here, pretty good southwest flow, 150 knots combining with the Arctic jet, then it pushes east and just kind of splits apart here with the strongest area going across the Dixon entrance. 9,000 feet southwest in the panhandle up to 30 to 45 knots, northwest 20, maybe 40 knots for a short time over the eastern Aleutians, 3,000 feet. Much the same flow here. North uh, westerlies on the back side of this uh, cold trough, shifting eastward, 22, 30, 35 knots there, diminishing with some flat ridging out over the Aleutians and Bering Sea. Pretty light over the eastern interior under this trough axis. And southwesterlies in the Pan Am translate to some occasional moderate chop, especially for small aircraft there. And uh, light to isolated moderate chop here along the western Alaska range out to Cuscoan Bay, moderate chop, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. cadets and welcome to the Okeanos Explorer. I'm Debbie and I'm an ocean explorer. I work for NOAA which stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Together with many other people I work on this ship and we explore the deep sea. How do we do that? Let's go find out. 
Octonauts, let's do this. Yow! The pressure in the ocean is so great, humans can't go there. So we send a special robot. Octocadets, meet Deep Discoverer, our special robot for ocean exploration. And this is Chris. He works with Deep Discoverer. Hi, Chris. Hey, Debbie. Can you tell us about what Deep Discoverer does? Sure. So this is Deep Discover, and today we're going to take Deep, Deep Discover up to four miles down to the ocean floor so you can see what Deep Discover sees. And how do we do that? We do that by using these powerful cameras and powerful lights. That's neat. And what is that? And this is our manipulator arm, and we use this arm to take biological and geological samples that we store up front in these boxes and we, so that we can bring them to the surface so scientists can analyze them. Wow. Isn't that cool, Octocadets? Wow! wow. Mm. Now that we know more about the special robot that explores the seafloor, let's find out more about the ship. Octocadets, let's do this. Now let's find out what we do with D2's video. Come along. This is the control room. A lot of things about D2 happen in here. Behind me, you see the pilots. They steer D2 on the sea floor. And over here we have scientists. Hi, Steve and Stacy. Hi, this is Steve and I'm Stacy and we are marine biologists. Can you tell us about the work you do here? We actually look at the videos collected by the robots and we try to identify organisms along with other scientists on the shore. What are you looking at right now? We're actually looking at a sea star. That's so awesome, thank you. Now let's look at how we make maps of the sea floor. Excellent, Quasi. A good map helps you to get to places you've never been. We also have a scientist on board who makes maps of the sea floor. Hi, Derek. Hi, Debbie. Can you tell us about your work? Sure. My job on the ship is to make maps of the ocean floor. We do this by sending sound from the bottom of the ship. It echoes off the sea floor and comes back to the ship. And then from that, we can make maps like this. So this is what it would look like if you were able to drain the water out of the ocean and actually see what the landscape looked like down there. Uh, we use these maps to give the vehicles a place to dive and they explore further, just like Octonauts do. Status report, Dashy. We're right on course, Captain. So earlier we learned that D2 picks things up from the seafloor with his manipulator arm. Let's find out what we do with those samples. This is the wet lab and Megan spends a lot of time here. Megan, can you tell us about your work? I am the sample data manager, so when the ROV comes up, we go out and we collect the samples from the ROV and we bring them in here. And we try to record as much information about them as possible, everything from the details about what they look like to the environment conditions where they were found. How cold was it, for example? Then we come in and we take imagery using this microscope and we take pictures using this camera as well. And then after we get all the pictures taken and we're ready, we prepare them for shipping to other scientists and museums so more science can be done, such as the squat lobster, this cup coral as well. And what is that? This is a piece of coral, or several pieces of coral, that we think might actually be a new species. So we are going to send it out for a comparison to existing species to see if we discovered something new. Wow, you have a really cool job. Thank you. Fascinating. I've read about this, but I've never actually seen it. An important part of how we explore the ocean is keeping in touch with scientists and Arctic cadets on shore. Let's go see how we do that. Rosemary, could you tell the Arctic cadets a little about what that dish does? Sure. My name is Lieutenant Rosemary Abbott. I'm the operations officer aboard the Okeanos Explorer, and that is our VSAT. It stands for Very Small Aperture Terminal, and inside that satellite dome is a very powerful dish antenna that allows us to communicate with shore and share video in real time. The technology is called telepresence. Wow, that is so interesting. Thank you, Rosemary. Now I'm getting really hungry. Let's go to the kitchen and talk about food. This is the ship's kitchen, also known as the galley. And this is Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Debbie. Michael is the chief steward on this ship, and he keeps 49 people fed for three weeks at a time. Michael, how do you do that? Uh, with a lot of care and with the help of three crew members, I have myself, the chief steward, a chief cook, and a second cook. 
and we uh, just do it with a lot of love and care and make sure that everybody's happy and well fed. We use up to 150 dozen eggs per trip, up to a half gallons of milk, uh, a lot of veggies and fruits, a lot of snacks. Everybody's very pleased with what we usually put out. Uh, we also uh, make sure that we do it in a loving way, in a sanitary way, in a safe way that keeps everybody from getting any tummy aches. <laughs> I'm about to enter the ship's fridge. It's like the Octopod's headquarters. Octonauts to the HQ. Ahoy, Captain. Ahoy, Debbie. Hi, Eric. Hello. Octocadets, meet Eric Johnson, the commander of the ship. Eric, can you tell us about what you do up here? Absolutely. Hello, Octa Cadets. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm an O-Corps officer and I'm the captain of the Okeanos Explorer. Welcome to my office. This is where we drive the ship. This is where we control the operations. We run the propellers that are underneath us in the back to the wheel up here at the front, which is where we steer. Uh, it's a pretty cool job. It's very exciting and it's pretty beautiful around here as well. So, Octa Cadets, now you know a little bit about the ship and how we explore the deep sea. I hope you enjoyed our time together. I'll see you next time. Debbie, safety first. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis, uh, with the low west of the curb lofts, that weak low, and the southwest winds, the ice edge here probably has pulled back north from where it was yesterday. And it uh, looks like uh, that'll be short-lived. That will pass by or actually drop southeastward. Another push of cold air comes down. So from the curb lofts eastward, over the next couple of days, you'll see a southward push of uh, the ice uh, actually through tomorrow, then the winds die off on Tuesday, higher pressure in over the area and things calm down and probably won't see much change there. And then later in the week, say Thursday, give or take a day, but later in the week, it looks like a big south wind coming in across from west, working eastward across the Bering Sea there. And that'll be a big, probably if it pans out, it'll be a big push or a retreat to the north here for the ice edge. And for Cook Inlet, actually, Ice Edge has gone south from where it was uh, yesterday in Cook Inlet, especially southern Cook Inlet area. Coastal water forecast, south 20 to 30 knot winds on the south coast of the Panhandle seas, 10 to 12 feet. Uh, much better up north, 10 to 15 knots with 8 to 9 foot seas. Inside waters, central and southern, southeast winds, 30 knots, seas 6 to 12 feet. Lynn Canal, south 30 knots, six, or seas 6 feet. Outlook for Tuesday, coming down to 20 knots, still from the south, though, for Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. And uh, Stevens Passage, southwest 15, Clarence Strait, southeast at 15. Small craft advisory level winds out of the west at 25 knots for the southern southeast coast, and southwest winds at 20 on the north coast. Moving to Prince William Sound, northwest winds, 20 knots. Tomorrow sees 3 feet, southwest 20 for the eastern north Gulf Coast, west 20 on the west side. Barren Islands, northwest 20. And then 30 knot winds for Kamishak Bay out of the northwest with 8 foot seas and northerlies. 10 to 15 knots for Cook Inlet out of the north. And then the outlook for Tuesday for Cook Inlet, north winds at about 15. It's not too bad staying north, uh, colder temperatures though. And a uh, big increase in the winds here, full gales for Kamishak Bay, northwest 40 knots. That blows right across the Barren Islands. Small craft advisors for the North Gulf Coast, north to northwest, 25 knots. Prince William Sound, northwest at 20 with seas at 4 feet. Kodiak Island, west winds, 20 knots with seas 4 to 6 feet. And for Bristol Bay, northeast winds at 20 knots. And uh, north to northwest for the Alaska Peninsula here, 20 to 25 knots with 7 to 8 foot seas. And then for the uh, day on Tuesday, 
A little bit of an increase here uh, for the area on the south side of the Alaska Peninsula, and that meet marine area, Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, north 30 knots, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, and up the east side of Kodiak Island, northwest 40 knots in the forecast, seas 12 feet, Chillicoff Strait, northwesterly gales with 7-foot seas, and 15 knots for Bristol Bay. That'll be coming down to 15 knots during the day for Bristol Bay there. And for the uh, western Aleutians, west of Kiska Island, southwest 25 knots, Kiska to Adak, northwest at 25, and then Adak to Atka, northwest 30 knots. Gales for Unmak Island out of the northwest on Alaska Island, north to west winds at 30 knots. And for Tuesday, winds laying down pretty good, variable 10 to 20, about sums it up there for the eastern Aleutians. Southwest 25, small craft advisories Adak and Atka, and westerlies 25 knots, 25 to 30 knots for the western West Central Aleutians. And for the southwest coast, uh, brisk wind advisories here along the Coast Columbia Delta coast, north 25 knots, 30 knot small craft advisory winds there for the Perbloffs, otherwise 15 knots out of the north, northern Bering Sea, Yukon Delta coast, St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound. And then for uh, Tuesday, west southwest 10 to 15 here, northern Bering Sea, south 20 for St. Ma Matthew Island, light southwest breeze for the Perbloffs, and northwest 20 here for the Coast Columbia Delta coast, eastern Wolverine Sea coast. West winds 10 to 15, light northwest winds on the central and west side, northwest 15 for the Chukchi Sea. Tuesday, not too bad, variable winds here, 10 knots for the uh, area from Wales all the way to the central coast, west 10 to 15 for the eastern Boulevard Sea coast. For tonight, uh, wind weather advisory for snow until 1 a.m., Yakutat, Juneau, Klondike Highway, Haines, on up the Skagway, 3 to 6 inches of snow. Wind weather advisory out for the Manuska Sassitna Valley until 6 a.m. for uh, 4 to 6 inches of snow or so. And for the Sassitna Valley until 6 a.m. Monday for a total of 8 to 12 inches or give or take with areas of snow extending to the northeast, colder and drier back to the west, colder for the eastern Aleutians. And uh, quite windy conditions uh, for tomorrow here with snow showers, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, rain and snow into the panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.